Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about that dreaded pound deleted error. I'm going to show you a specific example where it comes up based on one of our questioners questions. And then we're going to talk about some other instances in which you may see this come up where you're not expecting it. So let's get into it. Now, this is going to be a beginner and a developer video. I'm going to show you the beginner solution first, a nice, easy solution, explain what this is and why it's showing up. And then for you developers, I'm going to show you a solution to try to get rid of this if you can. Today's question comes from Musoki in Kampala, Uganda, one of my gold members. Musoki says, I have a continuous form where I use a delete query to remove all the data at once. Then I utilize an append query to add data back to the same form. However, the new data doesn't load instantly on the form. Instead, I immediately see pound deleted all over the form. How can I modify this so that the data loads instantly and the pound deleted text doesn't appear in the continuous form? Well, that's exactly what you're going to see if you delete all the records that go behind that form. Even if you try to replace them, those specific records are gone. Now, now, just a couple days ago, I did a video on importing text, right? You send your customer list to someone by exporting it as a text file, then they import it into their database, okay? You'll see that problem in this database under certain circumstances. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back to this database for just a minute. And if you haven't watched this video yet, go watch this first. All right, here I am in that import customers database. Now, if you recall from that video, what we do is we import the customers right into this temporary table. Then we run a delete query to delete the customers out of the customer table, right? And then append them from customer temp back to customer T. That's basically what Masuke has got going on, okay? But if I hit the import customers, all right, are you sure you're gonna do it? Okay. And everything works fine, no problems. Now, if I have the customer list open, Okay, customer lists open. If I do the import again, okay, it's done. Now watch what happens. As soon as I click over here, Access tries to load those records. There's your pound deleted. Why? Because those actual records that were in there before that loaded into the form were deleted. Those records are gone. They were replaced with other records, but in order to see those new records, I would have to refresh this form. Okay, you can do that manually with F5. There you go, that refreshes the form. Or you can close it and reopen it. Okay, that's the beginner solution. Now, for a more advanced solution for developers, I did actually cover this in yesterday's video when I talked about the is loaded function. All right, you can use the is form loaded to check to see if the customer's got that customer list open. And if so, requery it. Now we do a refresh in this video because if you're just refreshing a single field, like a calculated field on a form, you'd use refresh. But in this case, you want to reload the whole form. You want to tell it to reload all of its records. So for that, we'll use requery. Yeah, when to use refresh or requery can be a little confusing sometimes. So I put this video together that explains the difference in more detail. So go watch this if you want to learn more. But I'm going to put the is loaded function here in my global module. Instructions on how to get this are in that other video, the is form loaded video. Okay, really easy to do. There's the code. Okay, and now in this button here where we handle the import, all right, all you got to do down here at the end is say uh, if is loaded, what's that? The customer list form, I believe. Then let's make sure customer list form. Yeah, that's it. Okay. If that form is loaded, then forms customer list F dot requery. Make it requery that form immediately. Okay, save it. And now let's close it all up. Try it again. All right. Let's open up the customer list. There it is. Okay. Let's do the import again. Are you sure? Yep. And done. And you see, you see it flash very briefly. But it goes, it, the deleted shows up and then goes away right away. And there's all your new records. Okay, so that's how you would get rid of that problem. So that's just one instance where you'd come across that pound deleted error. There's lots of other instances where this might happen. For example, if you have a multi-user database, you've got other users, right? One of the other users that's logged on tries deleting a record. 
right? Let's say you're just browsing through customers. You're in the customer form here. You're browsing through, you're browsing through, and all of a sudden you see deleted here. Well, someone might have deleted Jean-Luc Picard before you got to it. When you open the form, all 33 records loaded, but if someone deleted that, it doesn't update this entire set of records in your form, but that one's going to show deleted. So that's one other reason why uh, you got to be careful when you're dealing with a multi-user database. Another reason, network or internet connectivity issues. If you're connected to a file server or you're getting your data off like SQL Server online, if there's a problem connecting, it might give you the pound deleted error. I've seen this happen a lot. You go to open up a customer record and it's like, wait a minute, that shouldn't be deleted, right? Generally, closing the form and reopening it fixes the problem and it goes away unless the connection problem is still persisting. All right, so that could be another reason why you get that error. Uh, just like deleting data, right? Another user deleting data, you can also get this error message if you have conflicts in updating a record. In other words, and access is supposed to prevent this, but it doesn't always. You go to update Jean-Luc's record and at the same time, someone else goes to update Jean-Luc's record and you both try saving at roughly the same time. It could cause a problem. The records could collide and one of you is going to see pound deleted, even though the record's still there. I've seen that happen a lot too. And of course, a corrupted database. If there's problems with your database file, you could uh, very easily see pound deleted when you know the record should be there, right? Your, your database is corrupted. Obviously, try a compact and repair. If that doesn't work, well, you might have other bigger problems with your database. Another reason, incompatible data types. This only usually comes into play if you're using a, a database server like SQL Server and you try using a data type on the server that Access doesn't support. Like if you got an older version of Access and you're using a big int on SQL Server, unless you update your local database to take that into consideration or you upgrade your version to a newer version that does support that data type, you might see pound deleted when the record's really there. It's just it's got incompatible data in it, so it confuses Access. All right, how do we fix the pound deleted error, right? Well, refresh the data like I just showed you with either a refresh or a requery, right? If the button, for example, is on that form, you could do a me.requery. If it's on a different form, you could check to make sure it's loaded like I just showed you and do a, you know, forms customer f.requery. Try to requery that form first. Or for you beginners, hit F5, okay? If that doesn't work, check your network connection or your internet connection. See if other things in the database are affected as well. If no forms open, well, you got a loss of connection there. All right, if it's just that form that's not reading, well, maybe, you know, try something else. What would I try first? Well, the easiest, obvious thing, close and reopen the database, right? Shut it down, give it a second, restart it, see if the problem still persists. If that doesn't do it, restart Windows. Just shut down, restart, and that fixes a lot of problems, more than you'd figure, right? The ONOFF button, turn it off, turn it back on. Oh, now it's working, right? How many of you in tech know that? That's just, if mom calls you up and says, my phone isn't working. Well, shut it down and restart it. Oh, it's working now, okay. All right, database still not working, compact and repair. That's your next line of defense. If you've tried all these things, you've shut down, you've restarted the database, you've restarted Windows, try a compact and repair next. That'll tell you at least if your database is corrupted or not, usually. Works 99% of the time. If you are dealing with SQL Server or another server type, again, verify your data types, okay? Check to make sure that you're not using big int or any of those things. Um, remember that Boolean values turn into bits, that kind of stuff, okay? Still not working? Hit up my troubleshooter. I have a really comprehensive uh, troubleshooter on my website. I'll put a link to it down below in the links section for you. It's got a whole bunch of extra steps you can check to, to cover all the kind of weird stuff you're going to run into when you're using Access. If something weird happens and you're not expecting it, like a pound deleted error and you've you know checked all the obvious things, you didn't delete any records or whatever, try running down the troubleshooter. And I tried to put these things in, in the order that you should try them to, you know, fix stuff. All right. Go just run down this list. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Been building this for a few years. Lots of help from my moderators, too. Okay. All right. So there you go, Masoke. There is your tech help video. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friend. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video 
to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. 
In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.